When the ball goes up, you have a choice. You can watch or you can rebound. The ball, watch this move. Great ball. Charles in the corner pattern. Puts it up and in, and the Bulls now just looking around with what has hit it. I watched a lot of videos on how to ride the unicycle when I first started, and I'm not trying to roast any of these guys, but I'd like to share a few of the mistakes I made and some of the things I wish I had known before learning to ride. I had a fall kind of like this, where I really bruised my tailbone, and it had me sitting sideways for months. I recommend learning in the grass if you can. There's a little more resistance to pedal in the grass, but I've found that those parks with the short grass that you can play soccer in, it's the perfect place to learn. Mwah. Even if you don't hit the ground and you catch yourself when you're falling off the unicycle, you'll be glad that you're on the grass. I did this on the concrete and my ankles and my feet started to hurt from all the impact after just the first few days. Don't use chairs. Just don't use them. They're gonna betray you when you most need them. Use something more sturdy. I also tried this kid's advice. I used a Swiffer mop and a broomstick. It didn't work at all. I was actually pretty discouraged because when I tried this, it felt impossible. I can't even ride with crutches. You, you can't, can't even ride, ride with crutches? crutches? Give up. You gotta get that inner critic out of here. Out of here. Instead of crutches or chairs, a lot of people say use a wall. You can't easily hold onto the wall, so you'll notice people still falling off. Most people spend the majority of their time getting back on the unicycle and then falling off, which means you spend fewer seconds with your feet on the place. Another issue I have with walls is that they don't facilitate progressive overload. Aristotle told this story about a guy who got a baby calf and he carried it around all day. And then the next day, he carried it around again, but the calf was a little bit heavier. And the guy kept carrying around the calf until it had grown into a bull. But each day, its weight only changed a little bit. So the difference to him was very minor. You gotta start small and then build from day to day so you can gradually increase the difficulty. This is how I recommend learning the unicycle. You start out lifting a little calf and riding around a trash can. Then you reach the point where you can carry a bull on your back and you're riding around town. Bring it around town. Bring it around town. I just want to quit, this is too hard. And here's the last mistake that I really wanna share. You don't wanna be like this madman who locked himself into an insane no, asylum good. and he's not leaving until he can ride the unicycle. So many people love this challenge of trying to do it in a day and they're just gonna get burnt out. I don't recommend learning to ride. Look look at how frustrated he is. This guy is not having a good day. His, his experience is probably so traumatic that he's never gonna ride again. If he ever saw a unicycle again, he'd probably say, no thank you, I'm done, good day sir. Good day sir! And are you sure that you don't wanna ride the unicycle? I said good day! I started learning to ride the unicycle as something to do during COVID, so it doesn't take years to learn. And I think after a week or two, you'll be able to ride with just 30 minutes a day. Because if, if, you, if you spend two hours on the unicycle, the next day you're gonna be super sore. You're gonna be tired. You might not wanna get back out there. But in terms of learning to balance, it's best to do a little bit every day. But if you happen to be one of those individuals with a bigger buttocks and a more stamina, 30 hours a day might be good for you. I don't know. Hey guys, it's me, Unicycle Rick here, and I'm here to be your new unicycle instructor. Wubble up a dub dub!
few highlights of this method. You can do it on day one, so you can immediately get your feet on the pedals. You can do it in the grass, which is softer to fall. It gives you experience turning on the unicycle, which the wall doesn't allow. And lastly, this is my favorite one. It uses progressive overload, so you can gradually increase the difficulty, rather than that touching the wall for support or not touching the wall and just falling down. That's really nice. That's, That's really, really nice. nice. Most parks have trash cans. I learned on those big rolling trash cans, that just set up two trash cans at a width where you can support yourself between them with your arms. So when you're first stepping onto the unicycle, I recommend that you put the pedal at its lowest point, because if you don't, you'll see the, the unicycle will roll backwards when you put all your weight onto the pedal. So to prevent that, put the pedal at its lowest point and then step on it. And you can put all your weight on your two arms and then on your foot. And what you'll notice is as I go around the two trash cans, anytime that I rest, I wanna rest with my pedals level. And that's because when the pedal is at its lowest point, it's the most difficult to balance. This position is actually called the dead zone for a unicycle because you have the least control over your direction when the pedal is at its lowest point. But when you're first learning, it's easiest to step on the unicycle with the pedal at its lowest point. So you can put your full weight on that foot. It feels like my arms grow twice the length. <laughs> so at the beginning, you just wanna work your way around the trash cans and gradually try to put more of your weight on the pedals and just get more experience going around the trash cans in a figure eight. At the very beginning, don't feel like you have to put too much weight on the pedals. Just put as much as you feel comfortable and get more reps in. Another great part of using the trash cans is that you can support yourself and spend more time on the pedals and less time getting on and off of the unicycle. Once you've done enough reps to feel like this is too easy, you can spread the trash cans apart. Just a little bit. Spread them out enough to where you can have a moment unassisted in between the two trash cans. Most people would try to get this unassisted practice and they would fall off at the end. We can avoid falling off and getting back on by catching yourself. Once you can do a half a revolution in between the two trash cans, spread them out enough to do one whole revolution without touching anything. And then you can do one and a half, then you can do two. And once you can get to three full revolutions without touching anything, you can ride. A nice part about the figure eight is that you get experience turning on both sides as well. And try not to touch the trash can at all while you're turning. Also focus on keeping your torso more upright. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Paxton, you're not wearing a helmet. Helmets are important for every bike ride, no matter how short. A helmet can protect against a skull fracture or other facial injuries. For free mounting, you noticed how when I pushed down on the pedal, the unicycle would go backwards. And that has to do with me putting my weight on the pedal. <laughs> okay, what you need to do is lean forwards with the same weight that the unicycle is forcing you backwards. You're leaning forward far enough to where it's the exact same as the force which will push you backwards. And then you can step right up. I'm like a tiger, I'm ready to pound. Going backwards can be broken down into a few small steps that make it more manageable. First, going downhill will teach you to regulate your speed. You gotta lean backwards while you're slowing yourself down. Then the next step is pedal forward on a flat, come to a stop, and then go again. Stop, go, stop, go. The next step is learning to idle. First, you can just be riding forward and then come to a stop, do a half revolution back, and then ride out of it. And then you can keep doing this until you can do a half rev forward and back continuously. And now you're idling. The next step would be to do a full rev backwards and then forwards. Once you can do three revs backwards, you got it. And that time that I mentioned falling and then sitting sideways for a couple months because of a bruise on my tailbone, that happened because I was getting a little too confident on the concrete while learning to ride backwards. I recommend doing it in the grass. It's good to practice going in circles, doing sharp turns. This will help you not hit people. <laughs> 
She took my love, then ran around. Now you've got everything I know, and learning to ride the unicycle is gonna be tough. But I promise you, once you see the look on your grandmother's face, it's all gonna be worth it. This isn't even my grandma, and that's the point I'm trying to make. That it doesn't have to be your grandma. It can be any grandma. <laughs> it's like I'm surfing, yo. It's like I'm surfing, yo. Don't use chairs. Just don't use them. Don't use chairs. They're gonna betray you when you most need them. It's all gonna be worth it. Dude, I thought this would be so much easier. Oh my goodness. I thought it would be cake. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. 